Welcome! This is the tutorial video for the Nativity Shepherd's Hoop by Nell and Joe Crafts. I'm Ashley. I'm the designer, creator, and brains behind the whole outfit. And I'm going to walk you through step by step everything you need to know. So we're going to be making the larger version of this cute little shepherd's hoop. So we're going to be learning several different stitches here. Some French knots, chain stitch, uh, back stitch, whip back stitch, satin stitch, lots of fun stuff. Um, we are going to start over here with our sheep. And we know that because of this lovely page in your instructions. We're gonna keep referring back to this. It's gonna tell you what stitches go where and what order to make them in. So we're gonna start by stitching the head of the sheep. And we can see from this line, there we go, that we're working with zero eight for both the ear and the head and we're working with three strands. All right, we're gonna start with satin stitch three strands right here. So I'm gonna get three strands of zero eight on my needle and get you in a little bit closer so you can see what's going on and we'll get stitching. With my three strands of zero eight on my needle, I've tied a knot in the end. We are going to be working in two stages through the heads. First, we're gonna put satin stitch on the main head and then later we will finish the ears, but we wanna do the body before that. So. We're going to start making vertical satin stitches from the top of the head to the bottom. Now the best way to do this is to come up first in the middle and we're going to use this first stitch as our guide for what we are working on. And then I'm going to come up to the side of it right next to that top stitch and I'm going to make another stitch and I'm going to follow this first stitch as my guide. You can see this first stitch is parallel, so the next stitch goes the same way. And now we're going to be careful not to pull these too tight because it's a fairly long space for a satin stitch. And if we start pulling too tight, our head will get all scrunched and start to look funny. So we're just going to keep repeating, coming up at the top and down at the bottom. We want to continue coming up on the same side and down on the other side. Now a few things you'll notice about my hoop. First of all, my hoop is holding still. This is so that you can see things better and be able to follow along better. Mm -hmm. This by no means means, <laughs> there we go, that you need to hold your hoop straight on. If you're more comfortable stitching with your hoop turned 90 degrees or even just a little bit, don't feel like you have to stitch your shapes straight on with everything right side up. That is not how I stitch when I am not filming. So feel free to move your hoop around. Now you'll see as we get here to this side, I'm gonna stitch right over these guidelines for the ears. We're just gonna pretend like they aren't important right now and fill in the whole head. When we go to make the ear later, we'll be able to figure out where the base needs to be. So don't worry about covering up those lines. And here on the side, you can see that I've got this little space right here. So I'm gonna add one more stitch on this side and then I'm gonna jump over and do the other side. Now we repeat the process, now going the other direction. So this first side we went from the center to the right, and now we're going to go from the center to the left, following the same process. And there we have it. The first head is filled in. I'm going to anchor off the end on the back and then move on and finish the other two heads. Now I'm gonna anchor off. I'm gonna show you here from the front. Save a little bit of effort and time. So I'm gonna slide my needle under the stitches on the back. And I might kind of catch a couple of the stitches. You see how you can see the needle here, but not here. 
We're just gonna go like this through the back of the stitches and then I'll pull my needle all the way through and this will secure the stitches without me having to fuss with making knots. So I'm gonna do that on the back and then jump over to these other sheep. So I've anchored off and now the thread I have left on my needle isn't super long. So I'm gonna skip this larger head here and go to this smaller one in the hopes that I have enough thread left that I don't have to tie off in the middle and keep stitching. Now we're gonna go from the top of the head to the nose, just like we did over here. The only difference is this head is pointing a different direction. So the top of the head to the nose is going to be this downward angle. Again, I'm gonna start from the center and work my way out. <clears throat> All right, I've made it to the third head. And I wanted to point out, if you're struggling finding where center is, especially on this one, he's got less of a point in his nose. One thing that you can do is to pull your thread across and visualize where you're trying to go first, and then just kind of slide the thread out of the way to get your needle where you want it to be on the first go round. I also don't want you to worry too much about getting straight down the center. Um, Anything close will work out just fine. We just want to have nice long stitches across these heads instead of short little ones this way. All right, I finished all three sheep's heads and I've tied off my brown. Now we're going to jump to work on the bodies of the sheep. These two are a different color than our main bigger sheep here. These two use 3866, which we can see here in our little guide, 3866, and then this larger one is going to use 3865. The larger one also has 12 strands instead of 6 strands for the smaller sheep. So we're going to start with 6 strands. I'm also going to switch over to my bigger needle. I've been using my little needle for 3 strands, and I'm going to use this bigger needle which is now magnetized, so that's fun. Um, you can see it's a little bit larger. If you got the kit, you got two needles. So I'm gonna switch from my little needle to my big needle uh, for six strands. So we can start on the sheep's body. You wanna have a nice long strand of floss to work with. And we're gonna start on the outsides. When we're filling in a shape with French knots, it's easier to work a perimeter of French knots and then fill in the middle than to try and fill in the middle and then realize we have a teeny gap that we have to do something about. So I'm just going to start right down here in this corner. And I'm going to come up and our instructions say that we're going to make wraps with, I'm sorry, knots with two wraps. So I'm going to make a circle. The thread's going to go to the left all the way over here to my right hand because I'm right-handed. If you were left-handed, you would set this up the opposite direction, all right? And I'm gonna take and I'm gonna wrap the thread around once and then twice. And then I'm gonna come down on the inside of my sheep and I'm gonna make a new hole. I don't wanna come down in this same hole for two reasons. Number one, my first uh, spot, there's a knot right here on the back and I definitely don't wanna catch that. And number two is the knots are a little bit wider than just a single needle point. So going down to the side will help the knot sit nice and straight. And then you pull down through the fabric. Let me talk you through that again. I'm gonna come up right next to my first knot. My needle's not moving anything, it's just right next to it. I'm gonna pull my thread all the way up, make my circle, from my left hand to my right hand. I'm gonna wrap once, twice, put the needle back in the fabric to the side of my thread, and I'm gonna slide this knot down so it touches the fabric. And then I'm just gonna gently hold this thread out of the way as I then pull straight down. Now, if you're new to French knots, 
don't worry if your French knots don't all look the same. Some of them are funky or not happy. The magic of making a bunch of French knots all together is that at the end, it's just going to look like a fill texture. The French knots aren't going to, none of the funky ones are going to stand out. They'll all just look like they're friends. So we make two wraps, needle to, to the side just a little bit, slide that knot down, hold the thread out of the way, and pull straight down. Now if you struggle to hold your hoop and make all of this happen, don't worry if you need to set your hoop down while, oh I got a little bit of the tail, there we go, while you're doing this two-handed part, and then pick it back up here as you pull through. I like to sometimes have a pillow on my lap if I'm sitting on the couch or doing that, or if you're sitting at a table, it can be really nice to just set your hoop down right there on the edge to help you get better uh, purchase and balance for moving your hoop all around. Now, as you create French knots, your thread is going to start to twist together. So if it becomes harder, or not if, when, when it becomes harder to start wrapping without getting tangles or pulling through without getting tangles, it's time to untangle your thread. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold your hoop out from your body and you're gonna let your needle and thread just hang straight down from the hoop. And the needle is going to twist itself back to where it wants to be, or I should say the thread will twist itself back to where it wants to be, like an old school phone cord. Yes, I'm old enough to know about a phone cord. Um, and that will help reset the floss so that you're not fighting it every time you go to make a knot. We're gonna wanna make sure that as I get up to this point here, that I put a knot in the corner right here and not just to the side of it. Now that worked out pretty wonderfully for me, but had I had like a knot and a half space right here, if for some reason this space was a little bit bigger than just one knot, I would come over here, come up in the corner, to make sure that my knot is going to be right next to the head. And I would make the knot that I want to make. Two wraps come down right here. Come on, go through. I know you can. Oh, what is going on? There we go. And then if there were any gap left, you could do one of two things. First, you could just leave it and see if the knots around it push and pull everything to kind of fill it in. Or you could put a teeny knot, just one wrap in between to kind of fill in the space. But this spot is a more important knot than this spot. We want to make sure that we've filled in everything right to our sheep's face. So now, once again, I will keep making the outline and I will check back in when I jump to the middle. Now that I have made it all the way around my sheep, I am going to start filling in the middle. Now there's really no rhyme or reason to the order in which you make your knots. I would suggest that you just stick close to your previous knot. You don't want to make a knot here and then jump all the way over here. That would waste a lot of thread on the back. So stick close to where your previous knots have been placed and then just fill in the space. Now, one thing I have noticed as I've been working around this is that my hoop does not have perfect tension. So if your hoop is like my hoop, and a little wonky and has a little bit of a loose spot. One thing I've been doing to help compensate for that is when I pull my needle through, not only have I been holding the thread out of the way, I've kind of been 
pinching the whole fabric here to help hold it as I pull the needle through so that the whole thing doesn't get pulled down too far and loosen the fabric, making it stay more even as I fill in the space. So I'm just gonna continue working through this sheep, filling in the whole space, changing thread anytime I need to. You will find that you probably have to change thread farther away from the end. Ooh, sorry. There we go. Farther away from the end of your strand than you would on, let's say, back stitch, because you have to be able to get your needle through the loop. So don't worry if you feel like you're stopping sooner than you might with other stitches. Just make as many knots as you can, then tie off and start again. All right, I've got more of my sheet filled in and I wanted to show you a little lucky thing that just happened. I pulled this string up right next to this knot and I caught it and you can see, or hopefully you can see that it's no longer down against the sheep that is kind of flopped up funny. So how I'm gonna fix this is I'm gonna prep my next knot and then I'm gonna make sure that I catch another string, not a bunch, just another one little string of this knot next to it as I go down. And hopefully right here as I pull this knot through, everything should sink back in to my sheep, and then I can keep going um, to finish off this sheep. I finished both of my little sheep, and now we're gonna move on to the big sheep. And the big sheep is 12 strands of 3865. Now, let me show you how to get 12 strands through your needle. You could cut two long sections and then shove them all through your needle, but the eye of the needle is not super large. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna thread on an extra long, so this is almost double my normal length of floss, piece of, piece of thread, floss, and then I'm gonna grab both ends of my floss, so I've just put one end through the needle, I grab both ends of the floss here, and then I'm gonna hold those together and run my hands over my floss until my needle is in the center. So my ends are together and the needle is in the center. Then I'm going to tie these two ends together into a knot. And I will use this with the string doubled over as 12 strands to make knots. And I'm gonna just follow the same process I did for the other two sheep. I'm going to start on an edge, fill out the whole edge, then fill in the middle. All right, I've made it to the end of my thread here and my needle is stuck on the thread. So I'm going to make this be my last knot. I can just barely get my thread around the needle. There we go. And then I will anchor off like I normally would and just cut uh, the needle out of the thread. And I'll be ready to start again and keep making my way around. With the sheep all filled in, it's time to give our sheep some ears. So we're gonna refer back to our sheet and we're gonna do a detached chain stitch with six strands of zero 08. So I have all six strands of zero 08 ready on my needle, and we're gonna do this one up here because it's gonna be the easiest to see. Now, we know from our diagram here, you can see from this picture, that the ears start inside the head. They're not right next to it, they're inside. So if you really want, you could try and pull some of these out of the way and see where the end is. But for the most part, it's not gonna matter too much. So I'm just gonna go a little bit inside the head, making sure to go up through the middle of a strand of floss, pull this all the way up, and then we're gonna make our detached chain from here. So I'm gonna go back down 
at the same location or very close to it, and I'm making sure not to catch the knot on the back side of my hoop. I'm gonna pull down and I'm gonna hold this loop on the top. Then I'm gonna come up at the tip of what is the ear. And then I'm gonna pull my thread. Oh, sorry, bumpy, bumpy. I'm gonna pull my thread towards the tip of the ear. Now, we're gonna stop before you pull super tight. You want it to be just a little, we want to be gentle here. Because the tighter you pull, the tighter this ear is going to be turned into just a straight line instead of this nice rounded shape. Then I'm going to go down and anchor this stitch by going on the outside of the ear or the loop and pull down. Then we're going to repeat on the other side. So I'm going to come up even with that. And you can see where my needles come up right here. See how there's the, I can see the fabric. I want to make sure that I'm going up through a strand of floss, that I'm splitting strands. You see right now, I can't see the fabric. That's what we're looking for. This will allow me to make sure it's all filled in. So again, we're gonna go up right here, after I figure out where there we go, tail is gone, and down the same point, or very close to it, pull down, Keeping a loop on the top, and we go up at the tip of the ear, pull the needle up and pull towards the tip of the ear. Again, being gentle right here as it finishes and comes snug down to the fabric. Then we go down on the outside of the ear and pull down. Now, I'm gonna anchor off. I know it's tempting to pull your thread from here to just come down to this sheep and start working. The problem is it's possible that the thread might show through the back. I also just don't like to waste any extra thread. All right, for this sheep, we're gonna refer back to the image. And I can see that it's up here in the curve and that the end of the ear starts right here. So I'm going to think this is the curve here. And again, you could slide stitches out of the way. I can see here, there, I can see a little bit of a line, but I know I'm in the right location-ish. I'm going to come up again, splitting threads, and then the direction of your ear and the size of your ear is largely up to you. There's not really a wrong answer here. If you make it similar to our other sheep, then it's all gonna blend in and nobody's gonna know. Nobody is going to know where it was supposed to or not supposed to be. So I'm going down right next to that and then I'm gonna lay this and think to myself, yeah, that feels like a good angle. We're going straight here to the side and I've got a really big knot here that I don't want to go through. So I'm gonna try and come up right over here in between some of these knots. And then I can test this and see what that looks like before I finish. And I'm pretty content with that. So I'm gonna pull that up again, making sure to pull towards the tip of that ear. And then I'm gonna make sure it's sitting on top of my knots the way I want it to, that I haven't pulled it too tight so that it just kind of lays right here on top. And then I'm gonna go down on the outside one more time. and gently pull, because I don't want to pull it down into the sheep. I just don't want it to move. And then I will again anchor off and make one for the last sheep. This is the end of part one of the Shepherd's tutorial. Check the description for part two where we're going to move on to start stitching the shepherds.